Secretary General of the International Telecommunication Union, Mr. Touré, Excellencies, esteemed participants in the World Tele Telecommunication and Information Society Day, ladies and gentlemen, I am deeply honored to be with you today to receive this prestigious award, the World Telecommunication and Information Society Award. I would like to warmly thank the ITU and the Secretary General for choosing me as one of the laureates for this year's award. I'd also like to congratulate my fellow awardees, President Christina Fernandez de Kirchner and Ms. Soon Yafang, and applaud them for their outstanding contributions and work. I'd also like to thank all of the ITU delegates for making this year's ceremony focus on promoting gender equality and empowerment for the needs of girls and women. Today, I thought I would share with you a few stories of experiences that led me down new paths, paths that were not part of my master plan, and the impact that they've had on my life and my work toward improving gender equality for girls and women. I have appeared on screen uh, as everything from a pirate captain to the president of the United States, uh, but the first role I ever played was a man. As little girls back in the 1960s, my best friend and I play acted at being brave uh, characters from Westerns in her backyard. And because I was taller, I would often play the father and uh, she would be my son. <laughs> and because we were young, we never noticed that there were no female characters from movies and television that we wanted to pretend to be. I've spent most of my adult life advocating for women and girls, and one small way has been uh, in seeking roles that I believed would be constructive for women. Okay, I was in a movie called Earth Girls Are Easy, um, <laughs> but this was very early on, and uh, been incredibly serious since then. Uh, <laughs> So five years ago, I launched the Gina Davis Institute on Gender in Media and its programming arm called See Jane. It first came about from watching children's uh, television programs and videos and G-rated movies with my then two-year-old daughter, Alize. I was stunned to see that there seemed to be far more male characters than female characters in these entertainments that were aimed at the youngest of children. I checked with my associates and with industry leaders, and no one seemed to be aware of the serious gender imbalance that we are feeding kids through the images that they see. In partnership with the Annenberg School for Communication and the University of Southern California, performed by Dr. Stacy Smith, we sponsored the largest research analyses ever done into the content of movies and children's television programs. The results were stunning even though I knew my, in my heart what they would likely be, at the dawn of a new millennium, when 50% of the global population is female, the message being sent to children in their seemingly innocuous kids' entertainment media is that women and girls do not take up half the space in the world, that women and girls have far less value to society than men and boys. No one, for the most part, is seeing images of males and females sharing the sandbox equally. We'd like to assume today that the marginalization and invisibility of female characters, especially in entertainment media made for children, will be long gone and a relic of the past. But unfortunately, the reality is that gender stereotypes remain deeply entrenched in today's entertainment. And there's been no significant progress over the last 20 years of research. Currently, for every one female character, there are approximately three male characters. The increase in the number of female characters in these films uh, in, during these two decades was 0.7%. Uh, by my calculation, if we add female characters at the rate we have been for the past 20 years, we will achieve parity in 700 years. I think that's too slow. Our research also revealed that when female characters do exist in children's media, the vast majority are highly stereotyped and or hypersexualized. Consider this, the animated female characters in G-rated movies wear the same amount of sexually revealing clothing 
as the female characters in R-rated movies. Additionally, animated female characters, because they can draw them this way, uh, are highly likely to be shown with a waist so small that it's questionable whether a, a spinal column could actually fit in there. The theme of this year's World Telecommunication and Information Society Day is women's and girls' participation in ICTs. The stark gender inequality in media aimed at children is of significant importance to our discussion of women and girls in I ICT, as TV and movies can wield enormous influence on young children as they are developing an idea of their role in society and thinking about career choices. Our research shows that females are missing from critical occupational sec sectors. In a study of all G-rated films from 2006 to 2009, out of 800 speaking characters, 80.5 of the jobs were held by men. And 19.5 of the jobs were held by women, which is in sharp contrast uh, to the real world where uh, the world's population is uh, half female, and women perform 66% of the world's work. Our research also showed that not one female in these G-rated movies is depicted in the field of medical science, business leader, in the law profession, or in politics. There were characters in those careers, but all of them were male. Uh, all of the criminals uh, were also male, uh, but I'm, I'm, actually, I'm not going to fight for parity in that area. <laughs> Fine with that. The aspirations of the female characters were limited almost exclusively to finding romance. And uh, one of the most common uh, occupations in G-rated movies uh, was royalty, which is a nice gig if you can get it. Uh, there's a profoundly negative message about women and girls coming through kids' media, and the message is sinking in. Studies have shown that the more hours of television a girl watches, the fewer options she thinks she has in life. And the more hours a boy watches, the more sexist his views become. So by feeding our youngest kids a seriously imbalanced worldview, worldview from the very beginning, we are, in effect, enculturating yet another generation to accept that women and girls hold a lesser place in the world. And because kids tend to watch the same TV shows and movies over and over again, negative stereotypes are repeatedly imprinted on them from a very vulnerable age. So what message are we sending to boys and girls if there are so few female characters? If the female characters are one-dimensional, sidelined, stereotyped, hypersexualized, or simply not there at all? What message are boys getting about the worth and importance of girls if media don't show girls taking up space equal to their real life numbers? What are boys learning to take into their future as policymakers, business leaders, and fathers? Children need to see an abundance of female characters of every kind occupying the space that is rightfully theirs. Seeing women take their full role will enhance awareness of the benefits for the family and community of women's empowerment, professional training, and non-traditional career choices. We know that when girls see characters engaged in unstereotyped activities, it can heighten the likelihood that they will pursue careers in the STEM fields. In other words, if they see it, they can be it. And if boys can see girl characters engaged in non-traditional occupations, they will come to see it as the norm and not the exception. Because media has a strong influence on society, it can have a powerful impact when used toward making a cultural shift. Media can create positive opportunities to overcome social and cultural barriers and discrimination. And that's why I launched the Institute. I, I really believe in facts and data as uh, important tools to change minds. So armed with our research, we partner with the decision makers and the creators of children's entertainment in Hollywood to encourage and foster a dramatic improvement uh, in the gender balance that our youngest children see. Clearly, gender equality uh, is an idea whose time has more than come which begs the question, why hasn't it yet? 
Uh, I believe in many areas of society that there's a common belief that uh, change happens on its own. Progress happens naturally in the natural course of time, that as time goes by, things change and change for the better. Or perhaps we believe that the necessary change has already taken place. The invisibility, hypersexualization, and disempowerment of women and girls in media cry out for change, but as we know, change doesn't happen easily. In fact, where gender equality is concerned, the tendency has been for progress to utterly stall. This is certainly the case in my industry where content creators simply do not notice how few female characters there are. They think the problem has already been fixed. The fact is that women are seriously underrepresented across nearly all sectors of society, but for the most part, we're not aware of the extent. In the United States, there's an organization called the White House Project. It's a bipartisan nonprofit that advocates for more women to hold leadership positions. They released a benchmark report a couple of years ago looking across 10 sectors of society, like academia, business, law, media, politics, etc., to find the percentage of women in positions of leadership and authority. The average across all of these 10 sectors was 18%. The percentage of female characters in crowd scenes in movies is 17%. The motto of the White House Project is add women, change everything. And this concept informs all of our work toward empowering women and girls. Improving media images, of course, is just one facet of empowering women and girls. Real and significant change in the status of women and girls is already underway. And I believe ICT will lead the way toward equality. Technology has enormous potential to create large scale collaborations that bridge diverse sections across the world. And this will greatly impact the ability to provide broad reaching access for the poorest communities and to help every mother, every girl, and every woman. Like Bill and Melinda Gates, and no doubt all of you, I am an impatient optimist. The time for change is now, and powerful agents of change are in this room today. All of us, NGOs, public-private partnerships, along with the ITU and other UN agencies, must leverage our combined influence to advocate for gender equality. We will embrace what Dr. Martin Luther King called the fierce urgency of now. We will not wait to see if real gender equality happens in the natural course of time when all of the evidence tells us that it won't. The lives of too many women and girls are at stake. As the Nobel Prize winning economist, Professor Amartya Sen tells us, every year at least two million girls die worldwide because of inequality and neglect. Women and girls are missing, and not just as fictional characters or in the world of technology, but in the cold light of day. Our world can only improve when women and girls are given their right as equal contributors and participants in every area of society. It is indeed a privilege to be recognized by such a vibrant and consequential intergovernmental organization. This powerful organization and the critical role of ICTs is in creating far-reaching opportunities for women and girls by eliminating gender disparities and empowering them to achieve their goals and aspirations. Finally, I would like once again to thank ITU and the Secretary General Mr. Toure, for honoring me with this award. Thank you very much. <laughs>